Hey everybody, Brian the Sky Guy here, reporting in to bring you some incredible astronomy resources to help you get a better understanding of the night sky, to explore our solar system, and to assist you in understanding some of your science curriculum as we go forward in these crazy times without being in school. So, we'll jump in. In just a moment, just want to say that this video is for everybody, you kiddos. Again, I want you out there exploring the night sky, visiting other planets. The hours of edutainment fun are at your disposal. And for you parents, this is a great tool, a great resource to give uh, in-depth uh, learning experience to your kids to have them uh, get a better understanding of some of the subtleties involved with daily motion, with uh, the lunar cycle, the structure of our solar system. This stuff comes up a lot in elementary grades, particularly uh, space science is uh, featured in the science curriculum for first, third, fourth, and sixth grades. So with that, we'll go ahead and jump in. I'll go ahead and, and say goodbye so you can see uh, the complete full screen here. And we'll start by Downloading our first program, Stellarium. It's a planetarium software that you can use. And what you want to do is go to Stellarium.org or Google Stellarium. Either way, you will get to their web page and you will have all the download options available to you. So no matter what program you are running your computer on, you'll find the right one to download. Now, there is a web-based version as well don't really recommend that because uh, you might have some performance issues. Better to just download and run it straight from the computer. Most of you will fall into the Windows category. There's two options, 64-bit or 32-bit. Now, if you don't know which one to download, I can walk you through the process. Or you can just do the quick and easy thing, which is just download 32-bit. You'll be good either way. But if you aren't sure but want to find out and be very diligent, all you need to do is go right down to the start button at the bottom left of your Windows screen, click on that, we get our big menu popping up, and then right along the side here you have these icons. Click the circle gear wheel icon, that is your settings. From there you have a bunch of options, go to system, now after system, you scroll all the way down to about. And this will tell you the specifications for your system. Mine takes just a second, I guess. Here we go. And device specifications go down to system type and there you will have your 64-bit or 32-bit operating system. And then you'll know for sure which one to choose. So, you click, you download, you install, depending on your internet connection, this should take 10 to 30 minutes, not too bad. You'll get an icon that appears on your screen, your desktop screen that is, and you can click on that and get things fired right up. So, again, Stellarium free planetarium software. We're going to start off with a look at the beautiful blue sky. And, and really, depending on what time of day you are opening this up, you could even perhaps see an evening sky. But it's afternoon right now, so we get our daytime sky. And looking around, we have uh, just, again, not a cloud in the sky because we don't like clouds in the planetarium. We can pan around quite easily just by left-clicking with our mouse and dragging in the direction you want to see. So you can drag left and right to pan around. You can go up, up and down. Did that backwards. Nevertheless, you get the point. You just drag and click uh, to move that screen around. Now, outside of that, not much going on on this screen. Uh, no buttons suppressed, so ultimately we want to look at other things. And to, to get into more of the options you have, you can go right down to the bottom and you have a pop-up menu with all sorts of options. We have our constellation buttons here, coordinate system options. We have atmospheric buttons. 
we have deep space object and planet op options, uh, all sorts of point of view options here, exoplanet meteor shower satellite options, those are really cool, and then your time navigation. So you can go backwards in time, you can pause and play time, you can go forwards in time. And then this button right here is a reset to the time right now. Finally, a power button. So if you ever need to turn this thing off, you just hit that button there, and that will do the trick. Uh, another pop-up menu on the left side with uh, some more advanced features. Down at the bottom we have a help window, which will immediately take you to all the different hotkeys for the different commands you can do. Really cool. Uh, you have some uh, astronomical calculations and some configuration options. You have a search window, which is really good. So if you want to find something like the moon or a planet, you can type that in there. It'll take you right to it. Very handy. Uh, we have lots of cool options. We'll be revisiting this one shortly. Um, so some in-depth options for the sky, uh, solar system objects, deep space objects, the landscape that's around you, and constellations. Time and date. We can change the time and date uh, at will. And then we have location. So let's go ahead and, and check out our location because if you want to actually use this to take advantage of understanding the night sky around you, like tonight, for instance, uh, you'll have to make sure you're in the correct location on our planet because the sky looks different at different times depending on where you are. So you can see this arrow pointed uh, to our location along the eastern seacoast of the United States. Uh, if you're anywhere in that area, you'll be fine. You don't have to be too specific here. Uh, there's, there's enough uh, relief for you know any casual observations uh, that that there won't be too big of an issue. But if you do want those specific locations, you can do get location from GPS if you have your privacy settings uh, such that your your laptop computer will, will transmit your GPS location. Um, I don't want to kind of mess with those settings, so I'll offer a different approach, which will be to uh, use a great website called latlaunch.net. So we'll go ahead and visit that, and to get there, we'll just simply minimize Stellarium. There's a full screen button right here. Uh, it's activated right now. We know that because it's glowing, so I'll deactivate that. It'll minimize into a regular kind of window. And here we are at launch.net, and you just kind of scroll down and use this window here to find your location. And right next to it is a Google map, which will update once you click on a particular area. So we're going to find a Time for Sciences Contentnia Creek location, which is right over here. we got the wetlands and all of our ponds. Totally beautiful place right along the Contentnia Creek. So I'll just click right there. That should be good enough for me. But if you want to even line it up right onto your driveway or something, your front yard, wherever you'll be observing, you see the Google uh, Maps kind of pops up here. So you can kind of get an even better view. Uh, but you'll get your GPS coordinates right here. Copy and paste. I'll go back to Solarium. Add them in. And you're good to go. Almost. Well, one last step you ultimately want to do is to name your location. You can name city, town, or whatever. I just do it as home. It'll add to this list here of uh, cities from all over the world. Unfortunately, Eastern North Carolina, not so well represented on that list. One other thing you might consider is time zone. It will default to your, your computer settings, so you don't really have to worry about that, but if you do run into timing issues, you can check this setting and set it to uh, North America slash New York, which would be uh, the Eastern time zone. So uh, with all that, the night sky will be true to time and your location. So let's go ahead and play around with some of uh, the options down here. We'll go to our bar and let's speed up time. So as I speed up time, the earth begins to rotate faster. The sun appears to move, but again, we're the ones moving. 
As the Earth spins, the sky appears to rotate the sun is setting, and we get those stars coming out. And uh, it's going to be a lovely night indeed. Lots to enjoy in the evenings right now. We have the bright planet Venus right above the setting sun with a waxing crescent moon. Always my favorite thing to look at is, again, the bright planets with a crescent moon in the twilight. All the pretty colors that come with that. You can see that for hours. Unfortunately, you only get... About 20 minutes, but with the power of the planetarium software, you can actually rewind and watch it all over again. So, cool stuff. We also have uh, some constellations like Orion, but we'll get more into constellations uh, in just a moment. So, actually, let's do constellations right now. So, with the constellations, everybody loves some constellations, we'll go ahead and use our constellation buttons to turn on those lines. You can turn on the labels and the artwork. And we see a whole bunch of constellations. There's 88 constellations that fill up the whole night sky. Each one of them represents a different person, creature, or object. Now, again, if we go to our uh, viewing options here, we're in Star-Lord. Each one of these options here on the left is a different sky culture. So again, everybody around the world looks at the sky in different ways. There's infinite constellations, so you can have some fun uh, kind of playing around with those, seeing these constellations from different places around the world. So a, a great example of how you can actually mix up astronomy into some of your other curriculum, like language arts and writing. So uh, the endless possibilities are there with that. I highly recommend it. Now, we'll turn off the constellations, and we will go now into looking at the moon. And it looks like I left the Star-Lord uh, into a uh, foreign language. So I'll go back to uh, Western so that I can actually read things. And uh, if you click on the moon, you can uh, have these cursors here. Alternatively, you can go to your search and type in moon and press enter, it will do the same. One other thing we can do here is lock on. So right now, uh, we have the moon right up here, and if we hit this button right here that locks on to the moon, bringing it to the center, and we can use our zoom in cues to get to the moon and see it up close. You can do that using the wheel on your mouse by scrolling it up or down to zoom in or out, or use the page up, page down buttons on your keyboard, which are usually right around the number pad. So we will go ahead and zoom in to the moon, and we do see the nice waxing crescent. We see a bunch of the night side of the moon, a whole bunch of, and actually just a little bit of that day side giving us that crescent shape there. Now we'll zoom out. And uh, we'll go ahead and go to the morning sky. So let me unlock here. We'll zoom back towards the south. And we'll just zip through this night and watch everything kind of progress. And now we'll look towards the west. Because in the early morning, right before the sun rises, you do have a whole bunch of planets out there. And we will lock in onto Jupiter. And, and, and do kind of the same thing there. And we will blast off to Jupiter. And we see some of its many moons. And one of my favorite things to do is to just watch the planets as they orbit around uh, naturally with their moons, but in super fast speed. Uh, to do that, we can use uh, this equatorial button here, which will make sure that Jupiter doesn't do all this crazy rotating and spinning uh, due to the day and night cycle of the Earth. We'll turn off the ground so that the Earth doesn't get in the way, and turn off the atmosphere so that daytime doesn't ruin our view. And if we progress time from there, we can see uh, Jupiter just orbiting, uh, rotating around, and the orbit of the moons around it. So again, this is all tied uh, into real life. Uh, real time. So you can see the setup of Jupiter and the moons and then go out there and observe it yourself through binoculars or telescopes. One last thing we'll check out here will be D 
deep space object. So I'll zoom out here and we will uh, pull up the deep space objects, this button right here. You get thousands of different objects you can look at, nebulas, star clusters, all sorts of things. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the Eagle Nebula, one of my favorites. Walk on and zoom in. And you get a great astronomical picture of that structure there. And lots of information about it, its position, and some of the, the different uh, terms we use to describe it. And uh, one other thing about that, you can get a lot of you know, you see a lot of things there. There's even more you could even pick out as well, or even limit it to make it less overwhelming. M stands for Messier. Those are just the 110 brightest, most apparent deep space objects. Definitely a good place to start in your explorations of the sky. So that's it for this edition of uh, Stellarium. We're going to switch over to another program uh, in the next video. So you guys hang in there. I'll be right back.